Okay, welcome everyone to the webinar this afternoon. We have Barrett Hall with Jobber. Um, if you're not familiar with Jobber, it's a cloud-based tool that helps organize field service-based businesses, and Jobber assists with quoting, team management, scheduling, and invoicing. Barrett Hall is the marketing manager for Jobber and works with the Jobber team to help make sense of their data. Thanks everybody for joining us uh, on this demo. Um, uh, like Austin says, I'm, uh, I work with Jobber and we, uh, we work with companies, uh, field service companies, so basically companies that uh, are stationed quite often out in the field and, and for residential or commercial cleaners, uh, that's most of them because they're, they're doing their business uh, out in the field and our company, it, it's a cloud-based business uh, where we're trying to save our customers time, um, taking manual invoicing processes and uh, manual scheduling processes that have quite often been uh, in pen and paper or, uh, again, those, those manual processes and make them more automatic, save time, and that's what our software is really good at. So uh, we're not here to talk about Jobber, so I won't spend too much more time there, um, but did want to give a quick overview. Uh, at the end of the webinar, I'm happy to answer any questions about Jobber, and we will be sending out an email to, uh, to those of you who are on the call. Um, just with a, a bit of a discount uh, for your first few months of Jobber. Uh, if you'd like to give us a try, um, or if you have any questions, we're always available for a, a demo or happy to talk through the software. So uh, I'm Barrett, that's, that's my mug, that's my face. Uh, I get teased a lot because I wore a matching shirt um, to the backdrop. Uh, on picture day, apparently, <laughs> but uh, uh, I am the marketing manager with Jobber and I've been working in digital analytics for a number of years. Um, one of the things I love about uh, the online space when it comes to your communication or your marketing is that it's so measurable. Uh, you know, it, obviously with, with Jobber we do a lot of online advertising as well as offline, um, but that challenge of uh, if you take out a flyer in the local newspaper uh, measuring that is far more difficult than uh, with your online uh, ability to look at the analytics. You can see exactly where, what advertising traffic sources people came from uh, and how they contacted you or submitted a quote or asked for a quote, sorry, uh, or gave you a phone call. So um, that's one of the things I love about analytics and uh, in particular digital. Uh, so we're going to dive in. Uh, now, Austin, we're, we're trying out a new thing where we're going to do some polls with uh, the webinar. Um, so we're going to put a poll up on the page. Is that correct, Austin? Just quickly ask uh, the attendees how often they look at Google Analytics. So I'm seeing the poll, uh, hoping everybody else is. Um, so how often do you check your Google Analytics data? Uh, select one of the following. And, and this is something that uh, there is, uh, well, certainly with an anonymous poll, there's no right or wrong answer. But even um, yeah, even when I'm talking to, you know, in the past when I was talking to clients or when we're talking at Jobber, there is no perfect answer for this um, uh, other than just having a general idea of where things are and then we're going to get into some of the different reporting and analysis. So I'll give you a few seconds to fill that out and I think Austin, the control is with you. Is that correct? Perfect. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is reporting versus analysis. Um, Reporting shows the data. Analysis provides action items on what we can do with the data. So this is one of my big uh, complaints with Google Analytics, and, and this isn't really Google Analytics' fault, um, but there is just so much data. And so quite often when users go in there for the first time, it's so overwhelming. It's, it's um, kind of paralyzing. You, you don't know what to do with it. So quite often you'll see people just pick a few numbers and we're going to report on it, but that doesn't really tell us what it means, um, it doesn't tell us what has worked in the past or what we should change up in the future. So uh, we're going to go through five reports um, that we've kind of handpicked that would be good for cleaning businesses uh, that will help drive action because really we're not just trying to create a cute report or we're not just trying to have a bunch of numbers on a screen that's going to impress somebody. We want meaning and, and that's what we really want to focus on. We want to focus on the analysis. So. Uh, with that, and, and this is on the same tone, we've got vanity metrics and awesome metrics. So our vanity metrics are kind of the metrics that uh, 
you see right when you log into Google Analytics, and they don't really mean anything. Um, they don't tell you how to change your website or how to change some of your communication strategies when you're getting uh, people to your site. Then there are awesome metrics that actually mean something, that actually indicate there is some success in your business or your website is doing what you want it to do. So my favorite examples of vanity metrics are pages per session and page views. So you're going to see this uh, typically when you first log into Google Analytics, depending on how your dashboard is set up, but you're going to see this pages per session metric. And that kind of implicitly implies that the more pages per session, the better. But if you actually step back and think about it a little bit, that's not true. For a lot of your cleaning business websites, um, I, I'm making an assumption, but you want customers to log onto your website. Uh, you want them to maybe check out your services page and maybe go to a contact page. Maybe they log onto your home page right away and go straight to the contact page. That could be a really successful visit and they've only visited two pages. Conversely, if somebody takes eight pages per session to find out how to contact you or to find out what it is you really do or what services you offer, we're not providing a very good experience. So to me, those metrics don't really mean anything. Um, on the other side, awesome metrics, uh, an email sign up. So th this is something that's very tangible. Let's say you've got a newsletter on your website uh, and you're hoping that the people are going to sign up. Uh, how many people are signing up? These are the people that we're going to talk to. They've actively engaged with us. They want to hear from us. Uh, it's a similar note could be a form submission, requesting a quote, or just a contact us submission. So email sign up, form submission, contact us, those are awesome metrics. That's what your website is meant to do, is get in touch with your customers. Uh, revenue is another good one. Uh, you're going to see this more with e-commerce sites than with uh, uh, cleaning service websites. But that said, we can still tie some revenue to your goals. Let's say, hypothetically, I'm going to throw out some numbers here, uh, one out of every three people that submits a contact form uh, it converts into a paying customer. That customer, your average customer, is about $150. We can assign a value to each form submission. So in that case, it would be $50 per form submission really whatever it works out to be, but that is real meaning. That means so much more than page views. And then lastly, goal conversion rate. Uh, if we're going to use the example of the form submission, and we're going to be using that a fair bit um, throughout this presentation, how many people are coming to your site and are doing that, that one action we want them to do? So in this case, 4.77% of people are coming to your site and filling out a form. And then we want to start asking questions about uh, you know, seasonality, uh, we want to st start doing some segmentation, and that brings us into the next slide, which is segmentation. So um, data in aggregate doesn't give us much to work with. Uh, or seg and segmentation is a great way to identify actionable insights. So what I mean by this, if we're looking at our conversion rate uh, on the last slide, and I'll just head back there, of 4.77%, how can we segment the data? Uh, people um, that are coming from Facebook versus Google search, are, are some of those people converting at a higher rate? Are, what kind of seasonality can we compare you know, September and October to the summer months of July and August? Are we seeing ups and downs there? And that can help you make decisions. Um, if you know, if, if you can learn from this, then you can put your money in a better place uh, when it comes to your marketing efforts. And not just money, your, your time, uh, which is always very valuable and there's never enough of it. So um, we're going to set up your goals. I'm, we're going to do one more poll because I'm curious about this one uh, in terms of how many people have set up their goals in Google Analytics if, if they uh, do go into Google Analytics semi-regularly. So uh, Austin, if you want to put that poll up, we can do that. Oh. Give me just a sec. I have to take presenter rights back there again. And let me give it back to you.
So goals are one of those ways that we can get away from vanity metrics, and I'm going to uh, quickly show how, you know, how to set them up. Uh, in Google Analytics, there's lots of documentation uh, on, on how to set these up. Um, show my screen. Uh, so if you, if you do have questions, there's, uh, I, I'm certainly available to help with this after the call, but I'm going to do a quick high level how to set it up. Um, and again, setting up actionable goals. How many times was our pricing guide downloaded? How many times did somebody fill out a contact form? That means so much more than things like page views or even average time on site. So. And Austin, let me know when you'd like me to take over again. I think uh, we're showing my screen right now. Uh, go, go ahead. I, my screen shows the poll being up, but I guess that's, uh, that's incorrect. Um, let me, okay. Um, let me go ahead and close that. Go ahead. Perfect. It sounds good. So uh, I'm going to get out of the presentation for a second, and I'm going to go over to my Google Analytics account. This actually isn't my Google Analytics account. It's a friend's who's uh, we're just we don't have any real data in here right now. It's just a dummy account. But when you log in, you're going to see these tabs at the top: Home, Reporting, Customization, and Admin. You click on the Admin side, and then over here on the right-hand side, the third column, there's a goals button or a goals link. So you're going to click that. Uh, we don't have any goals in here, so you're just going to create a new goal, and it's really straightforward. Uh, we can pick a template, hit continue, uh, and then again, because a lot of the sites that we're talking about and a lot of people that are on the call today uh, are going to be uh, lead generation type websites. You want people to contact us, so we're going to call this goal contact us form submission. So I'm making the assumption that you've got a form on your website. You might have to talk to uh, the person that manages your website or your webmaster to get that on there, but there's lots of great free tools, including Google Forms. Uh, I really like Wufoo, um, where you can embed a form on your website, and then once the form is completed, you can send somebody to a thank you page. So that's what the goal is we're going to set up. You click Destination, and you hit Continue, and basically what that means is anybody Anytime anybody hits that destination URL, so in this case, we'll say, it says, thank you. Um, so, barrettscleaningservice.com slash thank you. Then we're going to see a goal fire off in Google Analytics, and that's something we know is, is a great metric, a great visit, uh, a visit that had some value. You can add a value to it. I'm going to add $25 is how much I value each goal submission and then you can save this. And that's it. So it's uh, a little daunting because when you get here, you've got all of these different things you can do. I'm not a web developer, so uh, <laughs> I find it overwhelming sometimes. But just know that uh, you just have to go to the goal screen, create a new goal, and, uh, and that's it. So now that we've got our goals set up, we'll head back to the presentation. And this is why we're all here, is five actionable, or five analytics reports for actionable insights. Again, we're going for action um, instead of just our vanity metrics uh, that don't really mean anything to us. So the first report I'm going to look at um, is the device overview or the technology overview. Uh, however you want to name it is just fine. Um, and Austin, I'll just let you know, I think, uh, I think you're not on mute. We're getting a little bit of keyboard in the I in the apologize webinar. for that. <laughs> no, no problem at all. So on all the slides, and I'm going to share the deck with everybody uh, in the email we send out, uh, there's this how do you get there. So we're going to go audience, mobile, overview. Uh, and I'll just show you the kind of this first one, maybe the first two. Right here on the left-hand side, audience, mobile, overview. And then the data you're going to see here in the center part of the screen is going to be the data that you see um, on this presentation. So what we want to learn here is what devices are users most likely to use when accessing our site. Uh, and then based on our real metrics of, uh, with, with this particular uh, set of data, we've got the email sign-up goal, but let's pretend it's the form submission goal. Um, are certain devices underperforming? Um, 
we want to ask are, are conversions geared towards all devices. So when we ask what devices are users most likely to use when accessing our site, that's really important. You know, five years ago in web, uh, smartphones were very new, so websites were de designed uh, to be desktop friendly. People weren't thinking about accessing the web on their Blackberry or iPhone nearly as much five years ago as they were today. So the first thing we kind of want to look at is how many sessions, and this is pretty unsurprising. We're seeing a lot of people visit the site uh, through mobile, a few through tablet. That's a very surprisingly known, low number. Uh, and then, you know, about half, the other half on desktop. So if you're seeing that on your site, a really big percentage of mobile usage, you want to make sure that your site looks really good on mobile. So, you know, th this is something that Google Analytics can't tell you. This is where that analysis comes in. Open up your website uh, on your phone, uh, on your tablet, on your friend's phone. Check it out on a few different devices. This is something that your web developer should be able to help you out with. Um, you want to make sure that if, you know, half the people are visiting the site on mobile, uh, then you want to make sure that you're providing a really good mobile experience. Getting on to the other question, uh, are certain devices underperforming? This is quite a good um, conversion rate of 5% um, for an email sign-up. I, I know with, uh, with this particular analytics account, the page and the communication was really geared towards signing up for an email newsletter, so you won't often see it this high. But one thing we're seeing here is it's great on mobile. So based on this data, I wouldn't say that there's a lot of changes we need to make, um, but it's important to note if this number, 7%, was more, you know, half a percent, and both tablet and desktop was above 3%, we would know that there's a bit of an issue there. We want our mobile device performing just as well as every other device because it's making up almost half um, of our visitors that are visiting our website. I would, with this specific set of data, I would actually ask the question of why is it performing so good on mobile compared to desktop? And again, this is something that Google Analytics can't tell you. You have to do a little bit of investigating. But I'd want to know uh, when you land on the site on a mobile, are there certain um, is there certain messaging or calls to action that are driving this conversion rate way up? And if there is, maybe there's something we can mimic on desktop. So there's no no perfect one answer, and I think that's the really fun part of analysis uh, and, and Google Analytics, is Google Analytics will put you down the right road, on the right path, and then you're going to have to do a little bit of investigating. So with each one of these reports, uh, it creates more questions than answers sometimes, but the questions we want to ask is, should the site be updated to be more mobile friendly or responsive? Should there be layout changes on certain devices? So again, that's kind of talking about how many visitors are accessing by different devices um, and, and how our conversions are working on those different devices. So we'll move on to report number two. And I will just uh, make a note too that uh, if, if I'm going too fast um, or even if you'd like me to speed up, feel free to just send a note in the, uh, uh, the webinar chat and I'm happy to stop at any point and answer questions. Uh, the entire presentation will take about 30 minutes just over, so I know we've got an hour booked, so we do have lots of time to answer questions uh, if needed. So our channel source is very similar to our um, uh, technology report, or our device report, in that it looks very similar. It has a lot of the same data, but now we're segmenting not by technology, we're segmenting by how people arrived on your site. Um, again, how do you get there? It's in that left-hand sidebar, acquisition, all traffic, channels. And so we'll just go through each of these channels, what they all mean. Direct means somebody typed your URL directly into their web browser. So www.barrettscleaningservice.com. Referral means that somebody clicked on a link that was on another website. So you know, I'm giving this presentation today. Um, the, the folks at Cleaning Business today will have uh, the presentation up on their website or on a YouTube link. And if somebody comes from one of those links to the getjobber.com website, that's a referral. Uh, social, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if somebody visited your site but immediately came from Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, even Yelp or TripAdvisor, that will be categorized as social. 
Uh, then we've got paid search and organic search, which I'll quickly touch on. I'll actually, um, oops, just leaving the presentation here. So what paid search is, uh, so I'm going to look up cleaning businesses, Edmonton. I'm based in Edmonton, up north in Alberta, in Canada. Uh, these are all paid advertisements. You can see them from the ads right here, and everything along the right-hand sidebar is an ad. Below this map, and, and things included in this map, these are organic results. So when you hear people talk about paid and organic, that's what they're talking about. So we'll go back here. So we've got paid search, organic search, and then we've got email. So if you send an, out an email blast through something like MailChimp, uh, Campaign Monitor, Industry Mailout, there's lots of great third-party uh, services to send out email blasts, uh, it will be categorized as email. So very, we start to, you're going to start to see some patterns. We're going to ask similar questions in terms of what is underperforming and, and what can we learn from. Um, we want to know when we're looking at this, how are users finding our site? Uh, and then what channels and sources are driving valuable traffic? And then what channels and sources are driving less valuable traffic? Uh, so I think something that I find very interesting when looking at this set of data is how so much of it you know, we start at the sessions, so much of the traffic is coming direct. So that means that they're actually entering www.barrettscleaningservice.com into their browser. So what that kind of means is we're talking to people that are already aware of our business. And we want to, you know, that, that's great. That means that we, we have some good retention and, and, and customers like us because that's driving a lot of traffic. But what about these other ways where we can talk to people that aren't actively searching for us? Um, things like organic search, you know, uh, we want to be targeting things like Cleaning Services Edmonton, not just Barrett's Cleaning Service. Uh, so noticing that, I would begin to ask questions about why is all this other traffic or where are some of, where are we falling behind in certain areas? Organic search, how can we get our organic search up? Uh, that's a good question for your, your SEO person or if you have an in-house marketer who does a lot of search engine optimization. That's an important question. Uh, and then, of course, like, like the last report, we're going to look at what channels and sources are driving valuable traffic. So right here, organic and paid search, our search traffic is driving really great traffic. So this would, you know, say... It, it uh, amplifies what I would say before when we were just looking at this. Not only are we not getting very much traffic from this, this is these are great visitors. So how can we increase our reach in organic traffic? Same thing with paid search. Great conversion rate. How do we get our paid advertisements in front of more eyeballs? And you know, there's there's not one simple solution. Unfortunately, it's not just increase the budget. Uh, <laughs> there might be some different strategies there. But again. Analytics can get you on the starting point to do some analysis and make some really good decisions. Uh, the one that is really a way out of left field here is the referral traffic. Uh, it has a terrible conversion rate, um, but it's driving the second most amount of traffic. Uh, now that doesn't mean your referrals are no good in this particular instance. Um, maybe the referrals are you just had a job fair and people are coming looking for a job, so they're not going to fill out your uh, request a quote contact form or sign up for emails, but it is worth investigating. Uh, sometimes you can see through referral traffic, you'll see some spam sites get in there, so that might have been what happened here. Um, we don't have the answers right now, but it's something worth investigating and uh, something to be aware of. The thing you really want to avoid is if you spend a lot of time uh, getting guest posts on another blog and you think it's really valuable, this data will tell you it is or it isn't valuable. So then you can reallocate those resources, whether it be time or advertising spend. And with all these guys too, uh, if you click into the links, if I were to click into referral here, it would show me the actual referrals. If I click into social here, it would show me which channel, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. So again, uh, what are we looking to learn? Can we increase our reach through profitable and engaged channels? So we've covered that with we want to increase that through paid and organic search. And then we want to understand why the less profitable channels aren't working. Should we focus less on these? And so that's, that's our question about that referral. Um, 
what can we do uh, to increase the profitability of that channel? Oops. So we're going to move into location overview. Uh, this report will go a little bit quicker. Um, how do you get there? Uh, again, in that left-hand sidebar, you're going to go audience, geo, location, and further dimensions. And when you get to that report, and actually maybe I'll show you uh, really quickly. When you get to this report, so I'm just going to go audience, geo, location, you've got all these different dimension drill downs. So country, city, continent, subcontinent. And so you can determine what's best for you. Now being in cleaning businesses, uh, the reason we want to do this is we want to find out what city people are accessing your site from. Uh, if you only serve in one city or one state or one province, because I'm Canadian, uh, we want to make sure that we don't have too much traffic coming outside of our region. Um, I suppose it's totally fine if traffic is reaching you from another region, uh, but we want to make sure that we're not spending a lot of time or money to acquire that traffic. Uh, so just knowing that you're you're reaching your target market in your target city is very important. Uh, another thing that we can learn here are our offline efforts driving users to our site. So an example that we use sometimes uh, with Jobber, we visit trade shows and um, the trade shows are not in our home office. We like to see if there is a spike during the time of the trade show at a particular in a particular location um, when we are at the trade show just to see if people are engaging with us and uh, that helps determine if the trade show is valuable for us to be a part of. And again, this all comes back to not just putting numbers on a page, but it comes back to making decisions, uh, owning your, your marketing decisions and cost and all of those sorts of things. So lastly, uh, or the action items and questions we want to leave with. Should any of our targeting efforts be changed or altered to more effectively reach the correct audience? So again, this is the sort of thing, let's say you've got something going out in a newsletter um, and you're told that it covers one city. Keep an eye on this location overview. Do you receive a traffic spike when uh, that newsletter goes out or that advertisement in that newspaper goes out? Uh, if you do, great. Then you know start to segment. Where is that traffic coming from? If it's in your ideal target market, Perfect. Maybe it's something we can run again. Uh, you can see the conversion rate. Uh, if it's not, and if all the traffic that is being driven is in the wrong target market, you know to uh, probably not invest uh, in that form of advertising again. So we're going to go on to the fourth report. This is maybe my favorite report, um, which is a really nerdy thing to say, but I'm a, I'm a data guy, so I'm allowed to be nerdy occasionally. Uh, Again, how do you get there? Everything is going to be in that left-hand sidebar. When you're in analytics, you're going to click behavior, site content, and landing pages. I blurred out the landing page just uh, for the data. Uh, I'm using, again, a friend's website um, and want to be uh, respectful of his data, so I put the jobber green right there. Uh, but what a landing page is, or at least what Google Analytics defines a landing page as, is the first entrance to your website. So you know, we I like to use analogies uh, about the website being your your store. It's your place to make a first impression. And you know, if we look at this report, we see this top one, which is the home page, gets all of these sessions. These this is the first page somebody sees when they land on your website. But these are all the other pages that people have been landing on as the first point of contact to the website. So if we go back to the store analogy. We've got one front door, but unlike a brick and mortar store, a, a strip mall, or, or you know, uh, on the street, you've got an infinite potential for side doors. And those side doors and those side entrances are just as important, potentially, as, as your main door. Uh, and they provide customers with a first impression. And so this report allows us to see how people are finding you what their first impression is. So what we really want to learn is what is the first impression we are presenting to site visitors? What entrances are bouncing? And I'll talk about bounce rate in a second. And what pages are driving more conversions or underperforming on the conversion front? So with this set of data, I'm not too concerned because you know we've got uh, 1,100 out of 
1,400 sessions came through the home page. So it's really, we want to make sure that our home page is providing a really good first impression. Um, but let's say that this second page wasn't 97, let's say it was something closer to 600, and we weren't aware of that. It wasn't designed to be an entrance page, but all of a sudden lots of people are coming through this entrance page. It's great to be aware of because then we can look at the messaging on that page and is that messaging geared to somebody who is entering your store or getting to know your business for the very first time. That's not to say you should redesign every page on your website to talk to somebody as if they're seeing your site for the first time, but you just want to be cognizant of that. Uh, provide a little bit of context. If this is a service page, for example, don't just jump into, and I'm, I'm being a little silly with this example, but don't just jump into our services, our, and then just list, list them out. Provide a bit of context. Barrett's Cleaning Service provides um, you know, X services in the Edmonton area, and then go into some more detail. So it just provides that nice bit of context. So we really want to manage that first impression for those visitors. Uh, or for those pages that are seeing a lot of visitors. Again, for this data, it's not a great example, but check your own Google Analytics data and uh, it can help you make some decisions. Another thing we want to learn is what entrances are bouncing site visitors. So bounce rate is defined as any visitor, um, or any session, I should say, that enters a page on your website and then leaves without doing anything. They could be on a page for three minutes, but then they could just leave, and that's considered a bounce. So it's a bit of an imperfect metric, um, but I think it's really valuable uh, when you're looking at your landing pages because we don't want people to leave right away. We want them going on to a second page or a third page. So you can look at these bounce rates and start to say, okay, we want to lower our bounce rate. We want to provide that good first impression. Uh, how can we do this? And uh, you, you look at your high bounce rates and you're able to make strategic changes based on that. So this one, this one obviously shouts out, we've got a 76% bounce rate right here. Um, for this, I'm not too worried about it because it's such a small sample of data that's bouncing, but let's say there were 600 entrances here, 76% <clears throat> bouncing is a big issue and something we would want to correct. The last thing I'll go into with these landing pages is let's look at the email sign-up conversion rates and figure out um, how to drive these up. So again, this fourth page is doing a pretty poor job. Uh, you know, more than three quarters of the people that are seeing this page for the first time are leaving right away, and nobody has signed up for an email or filled out a form or whatever our goal will be. Um, so that's where this report is really great. Uh, so what do we want to do from here? We want to update our underperforming entrance pages. Again, we're defining our underperforming pages by a high bounce rate, um, by a poor conversion rate, and then we want to look at the high entrance pages and make sure they are delivering, delivering the correct or a good first impression. Now the last last report I'm going to go through uh, is a little bit of a, an advanced report in that it's search engine queries. So there is a little bit of setup required uh, on this report. You need to hook up your Google Webmaster Tools account to your Google Analytics account. But I find that this report, once you do that, is very valuable. Uh, if that all sounds overwhelming, the idea of hooking up a Google Webmaster account to your Google Analytics account, uh, it is something that your, your web person should be able to help you with, but there's also some really great documentation online. Google has great documentation uh, that can walk you through this step by step. So what do we want to learn from here? Uh, or actually, I'm just going to back up really quickly and talk about this before what we want to learn. I've blocked out these uh, search queries, so this is what people are typing into the search engine to find your site. Uh, so whether it be Edmonton Cleaning Business or Barrett's Cleaning Business, um, this is what people are typing into that search engine. Impressions is the number of time within your given time period, whatever that's selected in Google Analytics. Uh, impressions is the number of times that somebody has seen that on their screen. Clicks is the total number of clicks to your website. Position is how it's ranking on the search engine. And click-through rate is the percentage of people uh, that are clicking through your display on the search engine results page. 
So what do we want to learn? We want to know what search queries are driving traffic to our site. What search queries did we expect to see on this report that are not driving to our site? And what pages are ranking well but have a low click-through rate? So, you know, what queries are driving traffic to our site? We expect to see our branded term, but not, not just our branded term, some more generic terms. So I am keep coming back to the example of Barrett's Cleaning Service. Um, as my company, and I do business in Edmonton, we want to see some more generic things like Edmonton Cleaning Services, um, residential cleaning services in Edmonton. We want to see some of those queries in this report. And if we're not seeing those, uh, and, and this goes back to that second report we looked at about the traffic acquisition sources, we know these are things that we can work on. We can write content on our website for this. We can talk to our SEO person or our marketing person, develop content. Maybe there's some technical SEO things that are an issue. So we want to we want to fix that. Um, what search queries did we expect to see? I just covered that uh, on this report that are not driving traffic to our site. And then this one I find really interesting. What pages are ranking well but have a low click-through rate? So something like this guy here, uh, it's ranking on the first page of Google. It's in the seventh, on average, in between the seventh and eighth position. And it's got a less than 1% click-through rate. Uh, these click-through rates up here are quite high. Um, those are mostly branded terms. But this guy right here, and even you know this one in the fourth position uh, on this table, it's ranked really high, but the click-through rate is well below the average of these other three. So what can we do here? And I'll just show you an example. If we go to back to Google, um, we want to make sure that this title and this description are looking really good. If we're ranking well, that's great, but that's only half of the puzzle. We want to make sure that whatever our copy is right here is encouraging people to click through. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to do, like this is one, and uh, I, I don't think this person's on the call. That would be a <laughs> quite a coincidence, but I don't want to pick on this person. But it says, best house cleaning service services for the Edmonton Sherwood Park. I, I live in the area, so I know it's Sherwood Park. That's an okay title, but then it starts to get looking for cleaning services in your area. There's dot, 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 read our blog posts. Um, you know, what services are in the area? Is there anything you can do to clean this up? We don't want to see these uh, different dot, dot, dots. Instead, we want to see well-formed sentences. Um, and you can talk to your, uh, your SEO person, and they can help you write really good descriptions. Make sure that things are looking really good. Things aren't cut off. Um, even, let's just see if I wanted to do... Residential Cleaning Services, Edmonton. Let's see if there's some other examples here. Um, cleaning Services, Edmonton, Molly made like this is a great example of one. Everything's one clean sentence, nothing's getting cut off. I know exactly what to expect when I click on it, and then when I click on it, I should be uh, uh, happy with what I'm receiving on the page. So we'll go back here. There's just one more bullet point about our action items. We want to update um, how our pages are displayed on search engines. So that's a bit of a, a typo, update our how. Update how our pages are displayed on search engines. And then we want to use these queries as inspiration for new content. Are there any queries where you're ranking 15th for? Maybe we should write new pages and more developed content so you can get onto the first page of Google. Is there anything that's missing here? If so, we want to write content, write service content, so that you are displaying on Google. Um, it is a bit of a long-term strategy, everything that search engine optimization is, but uh, this analytics report will get you, get you started and uh, get down the right path. So I, how am I doing for time? I think I'm doing okay. Uh, 140. We're at 3.46, or 46 minutes in, so you're good. Perfect. Well, that's, uh, I went a little longer than I was anticipating, um, but that wraps up our five analytics reports. Um, and I've left a, a few minutes. If you've got questions about Jobber, uh, if you have questions about analytics, um, or even just anything really digital strategy, I uh, always love uh, nerding out on this stuff. So happy to answer any questions that uh, may have popped up. Uh, give everybody on the call a few minutes if they would like to uh, join the call, and if not, um, which is totally fine, uh, I, do I will have be sending a, I do have a question, uh, hand raised from Catherine Douglas. 
Oh, okay, so your question came through. Your number one keyword is not provided. Uh, so that that's a great question. So actually, I'm going to go into um, this. Now, unfortunately, there's no data, but hopefully uh, I can I can show you. Um, so when you're seeing the not provided information, uh, you're going to go, you're seeing acquisition, um, all traffic, channels, which is that second report we looked at. Uh, and then when you click on organic search, so I'll just quickly show you what this report would look like. When you click on organic search, it's going to bring up a list of all your keywords that are driving traffic to your site. This is a different report, and to be totally honest, I'm, I'm a little confused about the ins and the outs of it, but basically Google has stopped giving us all that keyword data in analytics in that report. So how you want to access your keywords is by going through to this guy, so it's, um, I'm sorry, I didn't update this, so this is incorrect. I will update this before I send it off. So you're going to have to go into acquisition, search engine, search engine optimization, and then queries. And when you click queries, this is again a dummy account, you have to set up the Webmaster Tools data sharing. Um, but it's actually a really simple prod, uh, process, uh, especially for, you know, if you've got a, a webmaster uh, there, or somebody who manages your website, it's really just a couple uh, snippets of code that Google provides to you that you just put in the footer of your site and then you'll get that. So unfortunately, Google has made it trickier. Um, that not provided uh, came in in the last three years and basically when you're logged into Google and do a search query, so if you're logged into Gmail or Google Plus, that data is not shared uh, in analytics. So hopefully that answers your question. It's kind of a, a bad answer. I wish it was easier, but you're just going to have to use this search engine queries report. So we'll give you a, a, a few more seconds to raise your hand um, and then I will just say I'm, I'm sounding a little bit like a broken record but uh, I will be sending out an email um, later today or tomorrow. I'll send you a link to Jobber so you can uh, check it out. We're really proud of our software uh, and we found it's really good for, for companies like cleaning service businesses. Um, little things like batch invoicing so if you've got clients uh, that you visit every week and you have to do you know, a couple hours of invoicing um, every week because you've got all these reoccurring uh, invoices. We've got a great batch invoicing tool, so you know those, that two hours of invoicing is really done in the click of a button. So it's a it's a pretty great time saving measure, something we're super proud of. So I'll send that out. It'll have a link, uh, or it'll include a download of this deck, um, so you can review that. I'm happy to answer any questions about analytics uh, or. Uh, jobber. So I'll include that in the email. And um, Austin, if there's no more questions, I'm happy to uh, to end the webinar.